Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem multiply strings. So we're given two non-negative integers, num1 and num2, but these could be extremely large numbers. And because of that, these integers are gonna be represented as strings, as you can see down below. And the good thing is that these integers are always gonna be either positive or they could be zero. And we want to just take these two numbers, multiply them together, get the product, and then return that product as a string. And we're not allowed to, you know, actually do this with integers, right? We can't just convert these two strings to integers. We actually want to do this with strings themselves because, you know, there's no guarantee that an integer this large could actually fit into a 32-bit or a 64-bit integer. And they don't want us to use any kind of big integer library. So there's gonna be two parts to this problem. The first part is going to be to remember how you actually multiply two numbers in the first place. You probably learned it in elementary school, but you may have forgotten. So that's the first thing we need to figure out, how to actually multiply two numbers. And the next part is, how can we actually take that idea and then translate it into code in a readable and you know somewhat concise way? And that's gonna be the second part that we have to figure out. And just to go through an example real quick, you can see 123, 456, you multiply those two together, you get this value and we are returning it as a string. So let's go back to elementary school. How can we take two numbers like these and multiply them together in a formulaic way that we can translate into an algorithm? Well, remember, we usually first start with the ones place over here, right? And then we just take this value and then multiply it by three, multiply it by two, and multiply it by you know the more significant digit. And then we add those three together. You know, We also do have a carry, which is something we're gonna have to keep track of. And you can kind of tell that, you know, if we take six, multiply it by these three integers, then we're going to go to four, we're going to go to five, multiply it by these three integers, then we're going to go to four, multiply it by these three integers. That's something that could probably be translated into a nested for loop, right? So we're kind of learning that as we go, but let's just start with this. So six times three, that's going to be 18, right? But normally, you know, we just take the first digit, eight, put it over here in this one's place, then we take the one and carry it right so the one is going to go up here it's going to be added to whatever goes down here but in the code we're actually going to be putting that one here immediately because you know when we're when we're keeping track of a carry we could keep track of it over here like in a single variable but it's kind of just easier to just put it here because we know it's going to be added with whatever next value that we put over here so next we're going to look at six multiplied by two that's going to be 12 right so we're going to take 12 add it with the carry right that's going to give us 13 in this position right so we have a three digit here and we have the one which is going to be the carry in the next position now notice how when we were multiplying these three together we put the digit in the first spot but when we multiply these two together we put the digit in the next spot and when you multiply these two together we're going to put the digit over here so basically the way you know how we decide where we actually put the digit when we multiply two digits together is basically going to be the sum of the indices of these two so basically consider this is zero this is one this is two these are the indices uh, if we're multiplying these two together we're going to put it but we're going to put the digit in the zero position if we multiply these two together we're going to take zero plus one we're going to put it in the one position over here now if we multiplied these two values values together, we'd say one plus one, you know, f f these two multiplied together, we'd put the digit over here because this is the two spot. I know that's kind of tricky to, you know, recognize immediately, but I think it makes sense because, you know, when we're multiplying six by one, we're not actually multiplying six by one, we're multiplying six by a hundred, right? Because this one's place is in the hundreds place. So that's kind of the intuition behind that. But yes, now we take six, multiply it by one, we get a six, right? So this is where we would put the six. We clearly have a carry over here. So we're going to actually put a seven over here. So, so far, this is our result, but we only went through this six digit. Next, we want to go through this five digit and multiply it by these three values. So we take five, multiply it by three, we get 15, right? The 15 is going to go in this spot over here right but of course we have a carry one over here so what are we going to do well we're going to take these add them together and we're going to take these add them together right so we're going to get 
an eight over here and we're gonna get an eight over here. Next, we're gonna take five and multiply it by two and the position that that's gonna go in is gonna be in this position, right? Because you know that's just kind of the math of how these indexes add up. So five times two is gonna be 10. So we put a 10 here, right? Zero plus eight, that's just gonna stay eight, but that one carry is gonna go over here in this position. Notice how the result, when you multiply two numbers, the number of digits in the output could be greater than the number of digits in the input. Now, what's the maximum number of digits the output could even be? Well, if we took two numbers, suppose 99 multiplied by 99, right? These are kind of the biggest integers we could have for two digits each. How big would the output be? Well, the output would be four digits. I think it'd be something like something like this. I'm not 100% sure on that, but basically you can see that, you know, if we have two digits multiplied by two digits, the max the output could be is the sum of the digits of each of these, right? So if we have an example like this one, three digits multiplied by three digits, we could have an output of up to six digits, but it, it, might, it could be less than that, right? For example, you know, you take 10 multiplied by 10, we just get a three digit number, 100, right? Even though two plus two is four digits, this is the output happens to be three digits. So it's, it's basically gonna be less than or equal to the sum of the number of digits. But okay, so where did we leave off? We were gonna now multiply five by this one and then put it in this digit position because this is at index two, this is at index one, so the output is gonna be at index three over here, right? These are kind of the indexes of the output. So five times one is just gonna be five. So we take a five here, add it with the one that's already there. So we're gonna get a six in this position. By the way, notice how when we count the indices, we're, you know, this is zero, this is one, this is two. So basically the integers themselves, we're gonna be iterating through them in reverse order. Similarly, we're gonna be building our output in reverse order as well. And then at the end, we're gonna take this and reverse it. Okay, so now we took five, multiplied it by all three of these digits, so we're done with five. Lastly, we're gonna take four and multiply it by all three of these. So four times three is gonna be 12, right? We're gonna put a 12 here. You know, we take these two, add them together, we're gonna get a zero in this spot right, a zero, and we had a six here, we had a one here, now we're gonna, since we got a zero here, we're gonna have another one carry in this position. So when we actually add these together, we're now gonna have an eight in this spot. So we took four, multiplied it by three, now take four, multiply it by two, which is gonna be eight, and we're gonna put that eight in this position because that's how the math for these indexes adds up. So eight plus eight is gonna give us a six, so we can put a six here, but of course we're gonna have a carry, right? Eight plus eight is 16, so this is what we have. We had to put that carry over here. So we took four, multiplied it by two. Lastly, we're gonna take four, multiply it by one, and then put it in this spot. So four plus one is, or four times one is four. So we take a four, add it here, add it with one. We get a result of five and then we're done, right? Because we took four, multiplied it by this, multiplied it by this, and multiplied it by this. We, we finished our nested for loop, and this is the result that we got. And as you can double check, that matches exactly with the output that they expected. So basically how I ran through it is similar to exactly how we're gonna code this up. The only difference is we're gonna pre-create, we're gonna pre-allocate the result array. In this case, we have three digits by three digits. So we're gonna have an output array and we're not gonna keep track of it in terms of strings, even though the input is given to us in strings, we're gonna build the output as an array just because it's a little bit easier. I think you could do it with a string, but then we'd have to do a lot of conversions, you know, converting a character to an integer and vice versa, but doing it as an array is a little bit easier and then at the end we can take the array and then convert it back into a string you know pretty easily so that's kind of what we're going to do and like i mentioned we're going to start at the right position of each string at the right you know in reverse order we're going to iterate through the input strings in reverse order and when we build the output you know this is kind of the order of the value we're going to build it opposite we're going to put the eight here because this is index zero we're going to put another eight here zero six five right so as you can see this is basically built in reverse order to this so we're going to do that but then at the end we can take this array reverse it and then convert it into a string which is going to look something like this and then we can return the string in the format that they actually wanted. 
And the last thing is when we're when we're taking two digits and multiplying them together, consider if we had the largest digits. Consider if these digits were actually nine and nine, right? We're only multiplying one digit by one digit. So the max that this could possibly be is a two digit value. In this case, nine by nine is going to be 81. So when we take when we we're always going to want the ones place, right, to actually put it in this spot, right? So when we take a value like 81, we can mod it by 10 to get the ones place which will give us one and we can divide it by 10 to get the carry, right? So if we divide this by 10, we'll get eight because it always rounds down in most programming languages, right? So that's how we're gonna do the math on that. We're gonna put the one here and then we're gonna take the carry, put it in the next spot, right? Add it to the next spot. And in terms of time complexity, the since we're going to be doing a nested loop, it's basically going to be, let's say, n times m, where n is the number of digits in the first value and m is the number of digits in the second value. That's overall going to be the time complexity. I think the memory complexity is going to be something like n plus m because we're going to be using an additional array just to have all of the output digits inside of it and then convert it to a string at the end. With that being said, we can go ahead and dive into the code. So now let's finally write the code. And the first thing I wanna do before I actually dive into the actual algorithm is basically, uh, if either of these digits or these numbers happens to be zero, then we can just return zero itself, right? But then we don't actually have to execute our code. So one way in Python I can check that is if this is in the array with two values, num1 or num2, basically I'm checking if either of these values happens to be zero, in which case we can return zero, right? Any value multiplied by zero equals zero. The other thing is allocating that array, right? So I'm gonna allocate an array of all zeros multiplied, uh, or basically the length of this is just gonna be the length of num1 plus the length of num2. And as I mentioned, we're going to be iterating through both numbers in reverse order. So before I actually iterate through them, let me just reverse each of them. And this is basically how you reverse in Python. I'm sure you can do it in your own language of choice. And we're going to iterate through both of these, keeping track of the indices, right? Because we know that the index is going to be useful for some of the math that we're going to have to do. So for i1 in, in range of the length of num1. So i1 is going to be the pointer for num1 and i2 is going to be the pointer for num2. Now we want the digit, right? So we're gonna take the numbers or the digits from each number and then multiply them together. We know the digit itself though could be a two digit value. So let's keep that in mind. So the digit from num1 multiplied by the digit from num2. And so where exactly are we gonna store this digit? Well, you might remember I mentioned in the drawing explanation, we're gonna take the indices i1, add it with i2, which is gonna tell us what position to put this in the output result. So we can then store this digit there, but remember we have to mod this digit by 10 before we actually store it here. And we might not just be storing it, there might have already been a carry in this position. So we're gonna add whatever this one's place is to whatever is, uh, you know, this target position. So, so that's where we're gonna add the one's place digit. Now we might have a carry. The carry might be zero or it might not be zero. Either way, we're gonna put it in the I, you know, the position plus one, right? So just the next position over is where we're gonna put the carry value. So we can add the carry value to this position. We can calculate the carry value by taking digit, dividing it by 10. And the last thing is, I didn't mention, but suppose we were given two values 10 times 10. In this case, we would have our output end up being something like 0, 100. The reason we'd have a leading 0 is basically because, you know, when we allocated the output array, we took the digits two digits here, two digits here. So we would have a four digit result. So we basically wanna get rid of any leading zeros, which is something we can do pretty easily. So before we try to get rid of leading zeros, let me actually reverse this result. So result is gonna be set to itself except reversed. And the beginning pointer is gonna be set at the beginning of this result. And we're gonna keep incrementing beginning while it happens to be zero. So while beginning is less than the length of the result and uh, the value in the beginning position happens to be equal to zero. Basically, while we have leading zeros, we're gonna increment our beginning pointer until the point that we don't have any leading zeros anymore. Now, we do have an array of integers, not an array of strings. So in, in Python, at least, there's a way that we can convert this. Uh, we can use a map function and basically convert every single 
a value in this result from the beginning pointer. All since we calculated the beginning pointer, we're just going to be, you know, we're basically removing the leading zeros by doing this uh, operation, starting basically taking the subarray starting at the beginning pointer, and we're converting each integer to a string. At least that's how we're doing this in Python. I'm sure you could write out the two lines of code that it would take in other languages. So once we convert the array to an array of strings, then all we have to do is just join the strings together. In Python, you can do it something like this. Just join it with an empty string. And one thing I forgot is, first of all, I named this num. I just changed it to num2. And since these are actually you know, characters, we have to convert them to integers before we can multiply them. That's something I usually forget. I don't know if you guys forget that as well. But let me actually convert them to integers first. And actually, one other thing that I forgot, and this is actually a good example, what if we had a, let's say we had a two in the ones place, and then to this two, we're adding a digit of, we had an eight, and we're adding a digit of two, right? So, you know, that's kind of what I'm doing with this line of code. In that case, we would have a two digit value here, right? A 10. So we'd have to take this, whatever is stored here, and then mod that, or rather divide that by 10 to see if we have a carry resulting from two ones place digits. That's something we were handling in the drawing picture, but I forgot about that when we were actually writing out the code. So the way we can remedy that is basically when we're going here, uh, we're going to take just the digit itself and add it to this position, right? The digit could be a one digit value like two, or it could be a two digit value like 12, right? Either way, we're adding them together. And then it could be possible we have a two digit value stored here, right? So one thing we'd want to do if we did have a two, two digit value and stored it here, we would want to take it and mod it by 10, right? So basically set this equal to itself, but modded by 10. We can do that pretty easily, right? Right, so we're just taking it, modding it by 10. If it, if it just happened to be a single digit value like two, then it would remain the same. If it was a two digit value like 12, then we'd get the ones place and put it here. But notice how we're doing this after uh, we're doing this line because this line of code actually is going to be similar because before we do that, we have to take the carry that could be stored here, right? Like I said, it could be a two digit value. Like it could be something like a 12, in which case uh, we'd wanna take this value, divide it by 10, and then add it to the next position over, right? So we're taking the carry, adding it to the next position. We can get the carry by taking this two digit value, dividing it by 10, and then adding it to the next position. I know this might've made things a little bit more confusing, so sorry about that. But you know, if you kind of do go through these three lines of code, run it on an example on your own, you'll see that it's pretty much exactly what I was doing in the drawing explanation. So as you can see, this code does work. So this is the entire code. I hope that this was helpful. It's definitely not super easy to get here, but I do think being able to understand you know, how multiplication works is a very good first step in being able to tackle this problem. I think using an array also makes things a lot easier. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.